Okay, let's start at the beginning, Vinny. We, so, we are skipping ahead. Yeah. This is the go-home show for WrestleMania Five. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, WrestleMania Five at this point was already the highest grossing wrestling show of all time from wow. any promotion. Yes. It was also, and by the way, think about that. It was the highest grossing show. So think of how cheap the tickets must have been for Mania 3. Also hmm. true. Because this was Atlantic City. Yeah. They is... were not putting 78,000 people in that building. No. It was also on its way to break in the all-time pay-per-view record. The Macho Man was a heel at this point because the show had already aired. So he's going all around the country. And they're doing fucking gigantic business with this guy as the champion. And Hogan chasing him. Obviously, it's huge going into WrestleMania. So there was a great debate, obviously not with Vince, but whether they should have beaten the Macho Man at WrestleMania Five, And we'll never know the answer, because they did. But this was a great example of, you know, they had a long-term plan. It was a year in the making. And the day was coming, and it was actually kind of like superstar Billy Graham, where that guy was super fucking hot on the day that they decided that they were going to put the title on Backlund, which they decided a year in advance, or two years in advance. And superstar was like, dude, I'm hot. Why are we taking the belt off me? And Vince was like, today's the day. And that's what it was for this year. And by the way, one other thing before we get going. Remember Hogan took time off because he was making a movie? Yes, No Holds Barred. Sure. Fucking No Holds Barred. Oh, yes. What a shitty movie. It's terrible. Yeah, awful. <laughs> All right, so the video package, which I can barely tolerate, but it is explaining that tonight the real main event of this show is not a wrestling match. No, no, no. Miss Elizabeth must make the decision of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. The most important decision she will ever make, whose corner will she be in at WrestleMania? Now, did you anyone? Know what? What's that? In terms of the career of Miss Elizabeth, this was, in fact, the most important decision of her life. Yeah, you could tell by the way she was acting. I mean, it was. It was like she was never hotter than she was at this moment, and it was like all downhill from here, except for the wedding that got ruined. I was going to say, the wedding was the per high point. So... Did anyone write down word for word Vitz's speech? I got bits nah, and pieces. I, I did no. it last week, and I couldn't okay. do it this week. She held the mega powers together, the madness and the mania, like nitro and glycerin, powerful and explosive. She held them together until they broke up. That's par- that part Wait, of the uh, f- the florid speech we got from Vince McMahon. You're you're blowing my mind right now. Nitro and glycerin are two different things. Nitro and glycerin, yes. <laughs> huh. So, yes, she'll choose... Like Dinah and Might. <laughs> exactly. Right. TN and T. Uh, she like must choose... Like T and T. Right. That's so, cool. anyway. <laughs> she, she, now, tell me again why we've never done a three-way show on Sunday before. What, what's going wrong? I can't imagine. So, a uh, quick Hulk Hogan promo. He vows that Bad News Brown will pay for the filthy lies he has said about Miss Elizabeth. Hulk is going to make bad news yesterday's news. So Jesse's with bad news, and they explained that what bad news said about Elizabeth is that she was doing favors yes. for Jack Tunney, the president of the WWF, to get special treatment. And they keep bringing that up. She did favors. Yes. And Vince even calls them favors, so to speak. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, what huh. a fucking storyline. And well, Bad a, News does his great promo. Women, that's the problem. This woman has split up the mega powers, getting between me and my title shot. Nobody's getting between me and a belt, especially somebody with a woman in his corner. I've got some bad news for Hulk Hogan. This guy was another guy. Fucking great. He was also awesome. I like when he's done and Jesse says, I'm happy someone has finally exposed the seamy underside of the Jack Tunney administration. Seedy. Yeah. Either way. There's a, somewhere in here, by the way, it's made clear that although bad news is the one who has accused Elizabeth of doing favors to procure preferential treatment for, I guess, both mega powers, Randy Savage has done nothing to defend or deny these accusations. Well, that's right. He's a bad guy. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk for all Hogan. he knows. I guess so. Hulk Hogan is the one saying there are filthy lies, and he will defend Miss Elizabeth's honor. So Gene interviews Hogan. First of all, 
<laughs> the, 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 the show itself is not the only thing with audio problems. Hulk is fighting through a sore throat here. Oh, this poor guy. He is twerking to get I this I was promo like, out. he needs a mask. They all need to be wearing masks for this promo. Probably do, actually. This guy's yeah. hacking all over the place, can't talk. So he's struggling through this, and next to this, Hogan, Gene, and Liz, and man, Liz has the blues. <laughs> This is the saddest. Does she, dude? <laughs> the saddest. She fucking Elizabeth looks like this saw. every time I ever saw her, including when the Mega Powers were together. So, let's see. Uh, Gene asks. So, so Hogan's ranting about what bad news, bad news said about Liz. How uh, Savage is the one who buried the Mega Powers, and Gene asks, "Is that why you have challenged Randy Savage for WrestleMania 5? Or maybe it's because he's the World Wrestling Federation champion. And that's who everyone should be challenging. Sure. Hulk says he always knew Macho was jealous. Tonight is bad news. Randy Savage, you're next, and I'm going to get my belt back. So it's Hulk Hogan versus Bad News Brown. Dude, this match, I don't want to hear anybody tell me this match was no good. This match was great. And actually, somebody that? did say this match was no good, and it was Dave in The Observer. What? <gasps> yeah, he said that Bad News looked better than usual, and he hadn't been looking very good of late. Wow. Dude, this hmm. fucking match, you know what this was? This harkened back to when we first started watching Saturday Night's main event, and we saw Hogan in, like, 1986 having all of these great matches, doing different kind of matches, with all of these different guys from all over the place. Bad News dragged such a good match out of Ho Hogan here. Hogan sweating, his fucking hair is drenched. Bad News just beating his ass and trying to grab chairs and shovels as the referee is pulling him away. <laughs> this match was great. So we always talk about the way they, f the way they find to insert commercial breaks on Saturday Night's yes. Main Event. So Bad News... Is uh, there's like a chair involved, and uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, unfortunate racial stereotypes in pro wrestling you don't see very often anymore. But the rule of thumb used to be the darker your skin, the harder your head. That's right. So, like, bad news goes into the turnbuckle and doesn't sell it. Hogan hits it with a chair, and bad news just takes the chair, hits his own head with it. Actually, that spot was weird because they're outside the ring, and bad news gets a chair. And he goes to hit Hulk, and Hulk blocks it, and then hits him with it. Yeah. And this was all right in front of the referee. Yes. And I guess the referee's discretion was, well, this guy tried to use it, so he got his just desserts. But that should have been a DQ. So bad news. Looks at the two of them in there. Hogan gets back in the ring and calls him in. And the ref's counting bad news out. And bad news looks at both of them and says, you wait right there. I'll be right back. And he just goes for a walk. Mm -hmm. He's gone. <laughs> And Hogan makes sure the ref doesn't count him out. They're just going to wait for whenever Bad News wants to come back. And Bad News, he finds a thing. And before I, the break, I couldn't tell what it was. I it think was it was a, a shovel. Yeah, it was a snow shovel. It was a, After the break, I could see what it was. It was a thing on a stick. Yeah. And he's whole, he raises his up over his head, and they go to commercial. Yeah. They come back for commercial. They go to a wide shot. Bad News is triumphantly marching back to the ring. Yes. Carrying the snow shovel above his head like a war banner. So everybody in the arena could see that he was going to cheat. Yes, I'm going to hit the Hulkster with his snow shovel. Yes. So Hogan stops that. So yeah, all well, that this... work, and then Hogan just blocks it and throws his ass in the ring. Yes. Yep. So, yes, I, I agree with what Brian said. This was a, a callback to 1985 Hogan. It was much slower. He's not the same... And not in the same physical state as he was then, and maybe bad news wasn't either for all I know, but but stylistically, there was no formula here. No. There was no shine, heat, comeback. They just went back and forth for like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I got to talk about this finish. All right. So they're fighting, <laughs> and... It was awesome. <laughs> it's so great. So finally, bad news is he's got him, he's got him on the ropes, and he, he says, give me a mic. He grabs the mic, and he starts burying Hogan for begging like a dog. And he says, now it's time for the Ghetto Blaster, which is the Inzagiri. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he backs up, and he goes running, and he fucking leaps high in the air. <laughs> Hogan ducks. Bad News flies over him. 
Like he does a full flip and yes. crashes on the ground. Feet, feet over head flip, yes. The announcers are like, he shouldn't have told him what was coming next. <laughs> even Jesse. Yes. That was a mistake, my bad news, to tell so, him what he was going to do. It's not even like he hits the ghetto blaster. No. And then Hogan kicks out and hulks up. He misses. Hogan starts doing the Hulk up. He does the finger point. He's shaking the head. And then all of a sudden, I'm waiting for the three punches, the leg drop, blah, blah, blah. Right. No. Hogan hits the ropes and does a fucking V-trigger. Yep. <laughs> a fucking V-trigger flying knee. Bad news goes down. Hogan does the big old leg drop, gets the pin. Mm-hmm. I was like, motherfucker, that was the best Hogan match I've seen in like three years of Saturday Night's main events. That was a good match. I, I wrote here in all caps, that was awesome. Ah, oh, it was great. Yes. And Hulk flexes forever and carries Liz around the ring. You know, it was, I, I haven't watched any of these since you guys started reviewing them, but I have to say, the inner child in me when Real American was playing. <laughs> yes. Oh, dude, go back and listen to all of these songs and the Saturday yeah. Night's main event theme and everything about it. These shows are the greatest. All right. Gene interviews Liz, and when I say Gene interviews Liz, he's not backstage with the Saturday Night's main event logo or a curtain behind them or in the locker room. No, mm-hmm. he has brought her out to the interview platform in front of the people to get the news, and he gets right to the, right to the point, whose corner will you be in? At WrestleMania 5. And she hems and haws. Probably talked more here than she ever had before. And maybe maybe after, for that matter. It's the hardest decision of her life. She cares for both men. She hoped it would never come down to this. He asked her a goddamn question, and she couldn't even answer the question. Whose corner are you going to be in? Well, it's a hard decision. <laughs> decision I never thought I'd have to make. I wish she wouldn't come down to this. And then she's dead silent. I didn't and Gene just promo. stands there, and he's like, Well, Miss Elizabeth, are you going to be in Hulk Hogan's corner? And she says, No. No, I'm not. And the fans fucking booed like crazy. Mm-hmm. And Randy Savage, and there's a lot of crowd sweetening on the show, but it was one of those shows where... Even though they were doing crowd swinging, like you could look into the crowd and see that actually people were angry and they were yes. booing. Yes. Yeah. When yes. Hogan was there, they were jumping up and down and doing all that shit. So Savage comes out. He's celebrating that she gave him in the corner of the champion. When the smoke clears, he says, she's still going to be with the champion. And Gene says, hold on a second. I want to get it from her. I haven't heard this from her yet. Liz, are you going to be in the macho man's corner? And her answer is, and I quote, no. No! <laughs> now Savage is furious. She made a big mistake. She's out of line. Mm-hmm. Does that bit where he raises her chin with his fist and talking down to her. Hogan's there immediately to uh, make Thank sure God. that doesn't go any farther. Yes, and Hogan says, The only reason I don't take you out right now, Macho Man, is because of respect for our manager. One, one reason is because I have respect for our manager. Reason number two, I can wait to WrestleMania. I will take care of you then, and I will get my title back at WrestleMania 5. Now, Brian, in recapping what exactly what Elizabeth said, showed ten times more emotion <laughs> than Miss Elizabeth. Dude, I was did. trying so hard not to. It, you, you, you failed. I'm sorry. You did what you could, Brian. You know what, Vinny, though? You say that the gimmick has not changed, but you're wrong. Because if I recall correctly, the last time we saw the Red Rooster, he didn't have the red fucking comb. Oh, my gosh. Uh, The the, the details, Brian, have been added. He's he's, he's, on this show. He's like Jeff Goldblum turning into the fly every week just a little bit more. He not only... (laughs) Dude, he not only has the Red Rooster comb now... Mm -hmm. But he does his promo and does a fucking cock-a-doodle-do afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I'll just get to the match because there ain't nothing to talk about. They go in there, he pins a Brooklyn Brawler in one minute, okay? Then the Red Rooster is going to challenge Bobby Heenan to get into the ring. And this fucking poor bastard is in the ring with a fucking... comb on his goddamn head 
and he starts strutting and doing the chicken thing with his neck. Yeah. Yeah. He's a fucking chicken. He's, right. he's a human rooster, yes. Yes. He's a giant cock, it's true. Mm-hmm. Dude, I remember the red rooster being a guy that was called the fucking red rooster, and he had to put his hair up in a faux hawk that was painted red so it right. looked like a fucking comb. I forgot the fucking walking around with the neck thing like a chicken. Yeah, and the crowing. And Don't the crowing. And the crowing. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.